In this video, I want to actually explain why do we actually care about exchangeability and what's its significance in Bayesian statistics. And I'm going to start off by continuing an example which we've spoken about previously, which is just the case where I'm flipping a coin. Either it comes up a heads or it comes up as a tails when I flip it. And I'm going to imagine that I'm flipping it n times. So what we've got now is we've got a sort of sequence x1, x2, all the way through to xn. And we could ask ourselves here, well, what is the possible sort of space of all the particular states which could come out here? Well, each of these has uh, two possible values, so it can either come up as heads or tails for the first case, heads or tails for the second, all the way through to heads or tails for the last. So here we can see that there are going to be a large number of possible states. There are going to be two to the n possible states. And if we hadn't done much probability before, we might ask, do we actually need to describe the situation in order to describe the joint probability of any one of these two to the n outcomes? Do we need to have a specific probability to each outcome? And thankfully, exchangeability provides the answer to this, which is in fact no. So how do we know this? Well, it turns out that if we're talking about the case of uh, Bernoulli trials, so we're trying to work out what is the joint probability that our first throw is equal to a particular value, our second throw is also equal to a particular value, call it little x2, all the way up to the nth throw being equal to a particular value, little xn, then it turns out that if we can regard our data as being exchangeable, then there is a very nice theorem and a very important theorem which is due to De Finetti. And the idea here is that we can represent our joint probability here, it turns out, by a particular integral. And the integral here is the integral from 0 to 1 of theta to the power, the sum of the individual values of x, so xi, so that's the sum from x1, x2, all the way through to xn, times 1 minus theta to the power n minus the sum of xi, so I'm summing over all n terms here, integrated with respect to some cumulative probability distributed df, which is itself a function of theta. So what does this sort of seemingly ethereal thing that I've written down actually mean? Well, it means that we only really need one particular parameter to specify the joint probability distribution, and that parameter here is theta. So we don't need to, as it turns out, to Finetti's representation theorem tells us, we don't need to specify a probability to each particular outcome. We are okay just to worry about a particular single parameter, which is called theta, for the case of binary outcome variables here. So that's the first important thing about exchangeability. It implies that we don't need to worry about ascribing probabilities to any sort of one of these essentially almost infinite outcomes. If you imagine we have a large number of n, the problem quickly becomes computationally infeasible. What's the second thing it says? Well, it says that imagine that our probability distribution f is itself a continuous distribution. In this circumstance, we could imagine writing p of theta, or just defining p of theta, as the PDF of this cumulative distribution function, so df over d theta. And in that circumstance, this joint probability now becomes the integral from 0 to 1, because theta here actually represents the sort of limiting proportion, as it turns out, of heads in our particular throws of the coin. So it's the integral from 0 to 1 of the same thing as we have above, so theta to the power the sum of xi, times 1 minus theta to the power n minus the sum of xi. And now all we do is we just multiply through by d theta here in order to get df, which we had before. Then we get something which is called p of theta times d theta. And this now starts to look familiar to something which we have seen before. This first part of the expression here is just a likelihood. What's the second part here, this p of theta? 
Well, this is something which is data independent. Notice that there's no I subscript here, it's just a function of theta. So we could sort of think about this as some sort of prior. So how are we actually getting over, or how are we actually defining the joint probability density here? We're actually defining it as a sort of, you can imagine this kind of being like an infinite sum of IID sequences, IID because we've got a sort of likelihood which is what that which we're familiar to, and those are weighted by the particular prior value of, well, the probability which we ascribed beforehand to that particular value of theta. So it actually turns out that the prior is suggested by the data actually being exchangeable. So that's quite a powerful thing and essentially there is quite a famous quote which says that if you are not happy with the concept of a prior then essentially you're not really con or you're not really that happy with the concept of a sequence of data being exchangeable. That seems a lot more palatable to me than just thinking about a prior on its own but it turns out that you can sort of think about them in a very sort of similar and analogous fashion. And that's purely because of the fact that De Finetti's representation theorem says that in this circumstance where we have exchangeable data, this is equivalent, where well, we can write down the joint probability distribution as kind of a integral here whereby we are weighting each individual likelihood by a particular prior value of theta. So as it turns out, exchangeability actually does sort of suggest some method behind the Bayesian inference process.